Hi, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we are here with one of our Five Minute Histories videos. And today we're going to head over to Jonestown, or Old Town, and take a look at two of the city's oldest landmark buildings. Let's start with the McKim Free School. Um, it is over, if you know where Atman's Deli is, and the Jewish Museum of Maryland. It's right just around the corner from those two places. Um, and it was founded in 1833 by uh, the bequest of a gentleman named John McKim, um, a Quaker. McKim was a wealthy merchant um, in the early 1800s in Baltimore. Uh, he was so wealthy that in the War of 1812, he donated $50,000 to the city to help uh, prepare for its defenses against the British. I looked up on one of those uh, money calculator history uh, software things, and uh, the today's value of $50,000 from 1814 is somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 million, so both wealthy and generous. He died in 1819, I believe, and left a will that set up a trust with his two sons, Isaac and William, um, and eventually in 1833, they uh, built the McKim Free School to help uh, low-income children. That was a desperate need at the time. The architects, if, if you look at the building and you say, that looks exactly like the Temple of Hephaestus on the Acropolis in Athens, you're right. It pretty much is a replica of the Temple of Hephaestus. The architects were the two Williams, um, William Howard and William Small. William Howard was the son of John Eager Howard, who gave us uh, Mount Vernon, the Mount Vernon neighborhood, um, Lexington Market, and at least three street names um, named after him, John Street, uh, Howard Street, um, and Eager Street in Mount Vernon. Um, his son, uh, William, was uh, one of the first engineers of the B&O Railroad. That was his profession. Um, his avocation was architecture, and he teamed up with uh, another William, William Small, uh, to build this building. If you want to know what Small's other work, uh, great work was, uh, it's the Archbishop's residence on uh, North Howard, or North Charles Street, sorry, North Charles Street. Um, the McKim Free School was a school up until the 1920s, when, uh, and it was operated uh, by the trustees, mostly out of the Quaker Church around the corner. Um, and in the 1920s, uh, the Quaker Church let a group of Presbyterians, Italian Presbyterians, um, use the building, and that became a partnership um, that's lasted through to today. Uh, the McKim Free School is now the McKim Center, uh, an after-school and youth building uh, uh, set of programs um, that operates. It's a city-owned building, but it's got a set of uh, trustees um, that, uh, that look over it, and the trustees still predominantly, I believe, um, come from the partnership between the Quaker Church and the Presbyterian Church. All right, let's, uh, let's jump around the corner to the second, uh, second very, very old structure, um, and that's the Friends Meeting House. It was, uh, it was built in 1781. It's the oldest religious building in Baltimore, and it has its roots actually back to, I think it was 1714, so really, really early, um, 1714, uh, when a group of uh, a gentleman named Taylor, I believe it was William Taylor, we have a lot of Williams, it might, might not have been William, but a uh, gentleman named Taylor bought a one-acre parcel on Harford Road, basically where today the southwestern corner of Clifton Park is, um, had to go to Joppa because that was in Baltimore County, and Joppa was the Baltimore County seat at the time, uh, to record the deed. And on that uh, plot became, uh, eventually became the Patapsco Friends Meeting, or if you grew up in Baltimore, you'd say it Patapsico Friends Meeting. Um, but uh, the Patapsco Meeting was there until 1775 when they moved to Baltimore City to where the Friends Meeting House is today, what was then on the very eastern edge of Baltimore City. And they built the meeting house in 1781. Um, a couple of interesting things. First is uh, the people who worshiped there included Johns Hopkins, the philanthropist, um, the McCams that we just talked about, the Ellicott family. So if you know uh, Ellicott City, um, the Milling family, they were Miller, Milners. Um, uh, Millers, they, uh, uh, they were there, as well as the Tyson family, Elijah Tyson, uh, the noted abolitionist, who maybe we should talk about uh, coming up, um, and his son Jesse Tyson, if you know Silburn Arboretum and Silburn Mansion, that's the, that's the Tyson. Um, so uh, a, uh, a very wealthy and prominent uh, congregation, I think, uh, you know, maybe it was the, the, the friends meeting for millionaires. I don't know what they thought of in their silent meetings, but when they were out of their meetings, they certainly thought about business and commerce. Um, the friends meeting in 1784, so three years after it got started, <coughs> um, built 
uh, built a school building, a uh, little brick building right, by, right beside the uh, Meeting for Worship House. And uh, that was the Friends School of Baltimore, 1784. The oldest school in Baltimore predates the Baltimore City Public Schools by about, I think it's 40 years. Um, the Friends uh, School was there. In the 1840s, it moved um, to Lombard Street. Uh, there was another Quaker meeting on Lombard Street. Um, there were the West Quakers and the East Quakers. We don't think of the East-West Baltimore rivalries in terms of Quakers, but uh, the East Quakers and the West Quakers fought. Maybe that's too strong a word for Quakers, but they had disagreements, especially over the burial ground, who got to go, where they got to go. Um, and the Friends School moved with the uh, West Baltimore Quakers to Lombard Street. And then in 1899, moved up to the Park Avenue meeting, um, which is in Bolton Hill. And if you know the condo building on Park Avenue in Bolton Hill, that was the third, uh, third location for Friends meeting. And then in the 1920s, they moved to their current location. Um, just one or two more quick things. Uh, the F Friends meeting continued to worship there until the 1920s um, when they basically just left the building and it remained vacant from the 1920s until 1967 when it became part of the Peel Museum and, and I believe part of the uh, Greater City Life Museum um, complex of buildings. Uh, and it was renovated really well then um, and then renovated again in 1997, late 1990s. Um, and during that renovation, uh, the folks who were doing it found what apparently was a hidden trap door in, this, in, the, um, in the floor leading to a crawl space underneath. Uh, and although we don't have any hard documentation, um, it uh, leads to pretty strong speculation that that was a, uh, a site for escaped slaves, you know, part of the, the greater Underground Railroad network. Um, today, the Friends Meeting uh, House is part of the McKim Center, so it's part of that after-school complex. Um, and uh, has tons of kids when there is school to go to, has tons of kids going to it every day. Um, and I think we'll wrap up there and maybe come back to East Baltimore a little bit later in the week. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.